you're an author of 13 books, you're a researcher, you're a professor also of anthropology and archaeology, um, but you're particularly well known for a finding you made back in 2005 in Bosnia. So could you explain a bit about what that was and how it happened? The last 30 years I've been researching pyramids all over the planet. And I have realized that uh, what they've been teaching us about the pyramids is actually wrong. They teach us that they are built in Egypt and Mexico, but they are built all over the planet, on all six continents. And secondly, they tell us that uh, pyramids in Egypt were built as tombs for pharaohs. However, in the biggest, the more superior, and the oldest Egyptian pyramids, no mummies, no pharaohs, no hieroglyphic symbols. So, after 200 years of Egyptology, we are back to square one. So I think the 21st century will be very exciting times when it comes to the pyramids. We need to find out who really built them, when, how, and why. So after 25, 30 years of the research in the pyramids from China to Peru, from Bolivia to Canary Islands, Mauritius to Mesoamerica, of course, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Salvador, and Belize, Cahokia pyramids in states, Egypt. In the uh, spring of 2005, I first came to the central Bosnian town of Visoko, about 28 kilometers northwest from the capital city of Sarajevo. The reason was not the pyramids. I just went to visit the local museum. However, when I saw the hill with uh, four sides, triangular faces, obvious corners, and the same slope from the bottom to the top, and four sides meeting at apex. For me, the geometry of the pyramid was very obvious. I took compass, and compass showed me that the sides were oriented towards the cardinal points, east, west, north, and south. And that's exactly how the pyramids were built, in China, in Mexico, in Peru, Cahokia in the States, some of the Mexican pyramids. And that year, 2005, I did uh, some additional work, geological core drilling, archaeological trenches, some analysis, and by October of 2005, I published the first book about the discovery of the Bosnian pyramids. At that time, I was talking about two pyramids only, which I could see with my naked eye, the Bosnian Pyramids of the Sun and the Moon. And in that book, I wrote that we were going to discover the underground labyrinth below the Bosnian Pyramids. I based that on my uh, experience with the pyramids in Egypt, for example, under one pyramid, in the Saqqara Step Pyramid, there is a huge network of underground tunnels. And the Giza pyramids also, and the Shanxi pyramids in China, and the pyramids in Teotihuacan in Mexico. Eight years later, yes, we have discovered that we started cleaning and securing the underground library. So, from day one, from 2005 till today, 2013, the last eight years, this has become the most active archaeological site in the world. It seems from the way you described the, the orientation, the sides, it seems quite obvious that it's a man-made structure, but you've received a lot of backlash from the media, from the scientific community, political establishments who seem adamant that it's a natural formation. Um, what other evidence would you say there is to suggest it is in fact man-made? This discovery brings at least seven elements that will forever change our view of the ancient history. Number one, these are the first pyramids in Europe. Number two, they are the biggest, the largest on the planet. The Great Pyramid of Egypt is 147 meters in height. The Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, over 220 meters. The element number three, the orientation of the sides of the pyramid are the most precise on the planet. We know that all Chinese pyramids are oriented to the north, cosmic north. All old Egyptian pyramids, most of the Peruvian, all Cahokia pyramids, some of the Mexican pyramids, 
So far, we thought that the best orientation is the northern side of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The error from the perfect north is 0 degrees and 2 minutes. According to the Bosnian State Institute for Geodesy, the error of the northern side of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is 0 degrees, 0 minutes, and 12 seconds. So this is the most precise orientation ever. The element number 4. The Pyramid of the Sun in Bosnia and other pyramids in Bosnia, which we named the Pyramids of the Moon, Dragon, Earth, and Love, they are all covered by soil. The same thing like in China, Mexico, or Guatemala. It's about one meter of soil. When we started removing the soil, we were discovering rectangular blocks. We have analyzed the samples in six institutes for materials in Bosnia, Italy, and France. And they all told us the same thing. It was man-made concrete. Now, the hardness of the concrete that covers the Sun Pyramid in Bosnia is uh, much bigger than what we have today in 21st century. Our concretes are usually in the range from 10 to 60 megapascals. In the case of Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the range is from 73 to 134 megapascals. This is the best quality concrete ever made on the face of the planet. The element number five is the age of the pyramid. Officially, Egyptian pyramids are approximately 4,500 years old. Officially, Chinese, Peruvian, Mexican pyramids, two to 3,000 years old. Well, in our case, the pyramids in Bosnia are covered by soil. And the State Institute for Pedology that investigates the age and, of, and origin of soil concluded that the age of the soil is between 12 and 15,000 years, meaning that the structure below the soil is even older. That makes the Bosnian pyramids the oldest on the planet. The element number six, under the pyramid valley in Bosnia, there is the most extensive underground tunnel network that consists of passageways, chambers, underground lakes. And this is much bigger than those in Egypt, Mexico, or China. And finally, the element number seven, in those underground tunnels, we've been discovering huge megalithic blocks, some of them reaching eight tons. We have analyzed them at the Institute for Atomic Physics in Zagreb, Croatia, and we were told that it was definitely a ceramic. If it is ceramic, it means it is made by intelligent things. So those seven elements really forever changes our view of the ancient history. Yes, and it seems impossible really to argue that they are natural based on all those seven factors. Why do you think it's so difficult for mainstream science and archaeology to accept the fact that they are man-made? Now, they were thought that the pyramids are built only in Egypt and Mexico. Now, they are built all over the planet. We were thought that there, there were no pyramids in Europe. All of a sudden, you have them. You don't have them in England, France, Germany, Italy, but in Bosnia, little Bosnia, very remote country. So, we need to change the history books. PhDs are not good anymore. Professorships <laughs> also. The way professors teach our kids, no bueno. So, imagine what kind of changes it is going to uh, have in uh, history, in educational system, from little Bosnia, Croatia, France, the UK, the United States. And all of that is run by one little non-profit, non-government foundation, which hmm. we established in 2005 and which we named the Archaeological Park Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation. So the changes are big. And, you know, there is always a lot of resistance when you come with the new and progressive ideas. Not only in archaeology, which is, by the way, very conservative, but also in science, in music, in culture, in sports, in corporation world. The bigger the idea, the bigger the obstacles. 
And we've seen that throughout history. Yes. In 2005, when I first approached the University of Sarajevo, suggesting that we investigate those pyramids together, they said, well, we never had pharaohs in Bosnia, therefore we have no pyramids. <laughs> I did not really realize that even Egyptian pyramids, the oldest, the biggest, were not built by the pharaohs because they did not have engineering skills, no technology to build those structures that we today called the Cheops, Catherine, Mycenae, and Snefer, or Joseph's pyramid. They were built much, much before by more advanced civilization. I approached the National Museum in Sarajevo. They said, well, we know the whole territory of Bosnia, we have no pyramids. The Ministry of Culture was not interested. So really, uh, when we started our foundation, a lot of people with a lot of enthusiasm and love for the research and love for its own country, love for the pyramids, came. And after 2005, we had a lot of them from different scientific fields. And I would say that it has become an interdisciplinary scientific project. So far, archaeologists or Egyptologists, they are, they are very jealous in guarding their research of the pyramids in Egypt, Mexico, China, or Peru. But in our case, everyone is welcome. We are open for everyone. If you go to Egypt, to Giza Plateau, you will see that there is a lot of excavation on the plateau, below the pyramids, on both ends of swing. You ask the leading archaeologists, and they will tell you that well, we cannot release any information about those research. So they are hiding stuff. The same thing in Teotihuacan in Mexico or China. So we think that the knowledge does not belong to the elites only, to the selected ones. The knowledge is a cultural heritage of all of us. It doesn't matter if it is Great Chinese Wall, the Egyptian Pyramids, the Eiffel Tower, the Bosnian Pyramids. They belong to the humanity. And that's how we behave. And I would say that we are setting some new standards in archaeology, but in the world of science in general, by opening this project for so many volunteers. And I must say that in 2012, we had several hundred of volunteers from 52 countries at six months. Mm -hmm. So by opening this project for all of them, we are saying, hey, you don't have to be professional, professor, archaeologist to work on such a global important site. You will be working under the supervision of our experts, but you will be part of the discoveries of history-changing projects. And I think that's another thing why some of the mainstream scientists don't like us. Yes, I think it's a really important thing you're doing to get the volunteers there because if the media won't put the word out about this discovery, at least open it to the people and let people see it for themselves with their own eyes. That's right. Um, now, one of the interest, really interesting points you mentioned is about the age of the pyramids. So you said it could be up to even 15,000 years old. And I think one of the assumptions um, archaeology and science has made is that our an ancient ancestors were these primitive people walking around with stone tools yes. at this time, when clearly they couldn't be if, if this was the case. What would you say about that? It is very sad that most of the traditional mainstream scientists still think that uh, the age of the advanced societies started with the Sumerians 8,000 years ago, and then Babylon, Akkad, Assyria, ancient Egypt, and ancient India. The reality is this is the, just the last civilization cycle. Before this one, there was another one which ended 12,500 years ago with the global catastrophe known as the Big Flood. Before that one was another one, 18,000 years ago. Before that one was another one, 55,000, and then 75,000 years ago. And every time the global catastrophe hit our planet, the civilizations are devastated and gone, and more than 99% of humanity is also wiped off from the face of the planet. So those who survive, when they come out on the surface from the underground tunnels or natural caves from the top of the mountains, they need to start from the beginning. And that's exactly what happened 12,000 years ago. Those who survived the big cataclysm, when they got out, 
they thought that they were the first one and today we think that we are the most developed, the most advanced and the most beautiful. Well, we are not. It is just the last civilization cycle. For this one we did have very advanced civilizations. When you see on the bottom of the Pacific floor, Yonaguni monuments, 13 underwater cities between Japan, Taiwan and China, the huge megalithic blocks. Today, 80 meters below the sea level, there's the Pacific Ocean. At one time, they were on the surface. That civilization is gone. When you see in the eastern Lebanon, Baalbek, a blocks of 1,250 tons, four times heavier than our technology, our cranes can move. Obviously, to prove that we did have more advanced civilization in the distant past, you don't need to go to metaphysical. The truths are in the physical world. And of course, dating of Mexican, all these Egyptian or Peruvian pyramids will take us before 12,000 years. The same thing with the Bosnian pyramids. Not only that uh, we got the age, 12 to 15,000, for the technological research, but we got very precise radiocarbon dating of the organic material that we discovered below the layers of soil and on the, on the top of the concrete blocks. Last summer, Italian archaeologist Nicole Visconti, with the team of his uh, volunteers, they discovered the fossilized leaf. So obviously the structure was there, the wind was blowing, and the piece of leaf, you know, came there and remained on the surface of the structure which we analyzed in Kiev, Ukraine, in the radiocarbon lab, and they told us the age of the leaf was 24,800 years, plus minus 200 years. In other words, we are going back 25,000 years. So, now we can conclude that Bosnian pyramids are most probably the oldest pyramids on the planet. Of course, we will need more data. And I believe once we get inside the pyramid, if we find the organic material belonging to the original builders, then we can get the final conclusion and say, yes, this pyramid was built in so and so day. Yes. And if that moment happens and it, and it does come out there about the, the real proof and evidence that it is a man-made structure, how do you think this will really affect our understanding of the origin of civilization? The discovery of Bosnian Pyramid is so important and it will affect our history books. It, it won't be enough just to add a little paragraph in the beginning because when you change the beginning of the history, everything that followed has to be changed. And that's why this uh, discovery affects all the scientific world and that's why they thought some of the institutions like the Bosnian archaeologists, geologists, historians, or the European Archaeological Association who was actually writing the petition to the Bosnian government to stop the project. Ninety leading American professors of geology, anthropology, history, they were all trying to stop the project at the beginning, 2006-2007. Fortunately, the Bosnian government rejected those petitions, so we kept working. And even though we had the problems also in the country, the Ministry for Culture was against us, several state and federal commissions for national monuments, they wanted to stop us. I think when you have a noble goal in front of you, you will find a way to continue. And today, eight years after, we can proudly say that we have had three international scientific conferences, over 100 scientists from more than 25 countries concluded, yes, these pyramids are archaeological phenomena, not natural, not geological phenomena. Secondly, uh, this project is globally important and it requires the history book to be changed. And I can say this, the first five years of the project, 2005-2010, if, if we had spent time proving that we have construction complex, and really, if you have the shape of the pyramid, perfect orientation, concrete blocks on the surface, inner passageways, underground tunnels and labyrinths, somebody was building a complex. 
Now, we don't intend to spend another hundred years trying to convince everyone we have pyramids in Bosnia. We had to move on. For us, moving on meant we need to figure out the purpose of pyramids. Archaeologists cannot help us. Geologists, Egyptologists too. Nobody teaches them about the real purpose of pyramids. We needed help from the experts in the energy phenomena. First one to come was the physicist from Zagreb, Croatia, Dr. Slobodan Mislak, with his 10-member team. They brought instruments to measure electromagnetic fields. First, we went around the nearby hills, no anomalies. We were going around the Sun Pyramid, no anomalies, until we came to the very top. And there, in the radius of 4.5 meters, we detected and measured electromagnetic field of 28 kilohertz frequency. We got out of the field, no detection. We came back, detection was there. It meant that this field does not go left or right, but it goes up as some type of the electromagnetic beam. <laughs> now, this particular frequency of 28 kilohertz is not something that you can find in the nature. Also, it is not something that we use in our civilization. Three months later, a Serbian electrical engineer, Goran Marjanovic, came with his equipment and he measured the same phenomenon, the same 28 kilohertz frequency beam. Later on, the sound engineer Heike Saulainen from Finland confirmed that, and anthropology professor from Italy, Professor uh, Paolo de Bertolis, confirmed that. So, in a science, when you have four scientists from four different countries at four different times with the four different instruments getting the same results, it is called international scientific verification of the phenomenon. And the phenomenon that we have, and we've been measuring the last two and a half years during all four seasons, summer and spring and winter and fall, is continuous, focused energy beam of 28 kilohertz frequency going up. And then we measure the strength of the signal. The higher we go, the signal is getting stronger. <laughs> the the physicists could not believe. They said, our technology is based on a phenomenon which says closer to the source, the stronger the signal. You move away, the signal is getting weaker. So we can call this Hertzian technology. But what we have in Bosnia, since everything is upside down in this country, we have this energy beam behaving differently. You move away from the pyramid, the signal is getting stronger. So let's name this non hertzian phenomenon. Today, in 21st century, we don't have technology based on this phenomenon. However, the guy who was born 250 kilometers from here was experimenting with this technology in 1899 and 1900 in his lab in Colorado Springs, and his name was Nikola Tesla. Tesla designed a transformer, which is today known as Tesla's core, and he was sending energy beam from one end of his lab to another one, 18 meters away. And he was able to light up the light bulbs, even if they were burned. And just before they are going to burn down his lab, he did the last experiment. He sent an energy beam from his lab to the ionosphere around our planet. This energy beam is reflected, it was coming back to the Earth much stronger, non hertzian phenomena. And then he was able to light up 10,000 homes in Colorado Springs. So for the first time, one scientist in our civilization cycle has proven that clean energy was possible, that unlimited quantities of energies were possible, that non hertz and phenomena was possible, that wireless transportation of energy was possible, and finally that free energy was possible. And um Sorry, the interesting thing about that is that he faced exactly the same thing as you are now, which was the scientific community, um, the political establishments um, were against him and not willing to accept his findings, which were, which were based on strong scientific evidence. 
Exactly. Now, how would American corporations make money selling the free energy? No way. And there's the reason why J.P. Morgan stopped funding Nikola Tesla. Instead, they were building very expensive hydro and thermal power plants. Now there's nuclear power plants. And if they're building, you know, transformers and cables, they lose 20 to 50 percent of the energy during the transportation. So they can sell it to us and users for a lot of money. And that's the base for the profit economy. However, one day, the free energy will be available for all of us. And that will be the first pillar of the free society. The second pillar will be the free flow of knowledge. Instead, flowing only to the elites, it will be coming to all of us. And based on those two pillars, we will have a society of free women and free men. What we have in Bosnia, with the Bosnian pyramids, is exactly that. Somebody knew that the most powerful geometrical shape when it comes to the energy, is the shape of four-sided pyramids. So when you orient it to the cardinal points, east, west, north, south, and that's exactly how the energy flows within our planet, then the pyramids gets working and uh, it starts producing certain energy phenomena. Now, the pyramids does not produce energy from nothing. The location is very important. What we did find out through three labs in Zagreb, Belgrade, and Vienna, Austria, was that the source of electromagnetic beam is actually 2,440 meters below the pyramid, a huge iron plate. As we know, iron generates its own electromagnetism. So what the pyramid does, it sucks this energy, amplifying it. The pyramid is actually energy amplifier, but not only electromagnetic fields, also magnetic energy. We know there is a magnetic field around our planet, thanks to the uh, magma in the core of our planet. The third type of the energy, a lot of underground waters in Visokovale in Bosnia. When you have two parallel underground water flows, in between electricity is generated. The fourth energy type, when water moves, it releases negative ions. So we have negative ionization. So those four types of energies we can measure using our scientific instruments. And the pyramid is actually making them much, much stronger and more focused. How many more types of energies that we don't have scientific instruments for? For example, how do you measure Orgon, or chi, or life energy. So I would say that uh, the ancient builders of the pyramid knew that it was the most powerful shape in the nature, and they were building the most complex energy machines. Mm. It's really fascinating because this discovery is not just significant for archaeology, for history, but also for science. As you've, as you've pointed out, it's very significant for science. And so I really wish you luck in, in pursuing this because it's, it's not just important for Bosnia, it's really important for, for the whole world and everything we, we currently know about history and science. It's, it's exactly that. And I would say when we think about the purpose of pyramids and underground tunnels that uh, comes with it, it has nothing to do with the one dead body, that one of king or pharaoh. The pyramids were built for the living communities, the energy challenges. But also, uh, we approached this project to get the understanding of why they built it from three realms physical, which is based on our material science, but also energy and the spiritual. And only if we look at pyramids and other archaeological sites from the ancient times through those three realms, we will be able to understand. And one last thing, the measurements that we've done just recently, a few months back, we figure out that on the top of the Sun Pyramid, 
we have also the ultrasound beam of 28 kilohertz frequency. This frequency for the ultrasound, which, by the way, we cannot hear, we hear from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 28 kilohertz is a little bit higher. But this beam and this ultrasound frequency uh, was important because when the American Ralph Ring was uh, experimenting with different frequencies, and he came to 28 kilohertz, he noticed that table tennis ball, the ping pong ball, which was above the source of ultrasound, started levitating. So it seemed that this particular frequency is good for the levitation. And indeed, a lot of our visitors, especially those who come and meditate in underground tunnels and on the top of the sun pyramid, they say they feel so light. I hope we won't need to go after them on the sky and on the cloud. <laughs> but uh, it seems that the ancients knew why they were generating this particular frequency. And finally, very strong frequency of 7.83 hertz, which is ultra-low frequency called infrasound. Before 1990, our planet and all living organisms were resonating at this low frequency, 7.83. It is called in science Schumann resonance. It is the best frequency for our, for our physical, mental and spiritual abilities. Unfortunately, due to huge usage of the cell phones, laptops, a lot of bad electromagnetism is going to the ionosphere. So we don't have this Schumann resonance of 7.83 anymore. 94, we turned to 8.2. And then 95, 6, 9, 10, last year 14.5, this year 2013 15.2. So this resonance is going up and higher and higher. There is a direct correlation between the ionosphere and this resonance and our brain waves. As you know, the state of deep sleep is from 0 0.5 Hz to 5 Hz. The alpha brain waves are from 5 to 8 Hz. So 7.83 is like a very deep meditation state. Very good for us. But now, after 8, it is our awakened state from 8 to 15. Over 15, we are becoming rather aggressive, a lot of stress. So it means that thanks to our technology, in raising this frequency of the planet, we are going to affect our brains and our society as a whole in a very bad way. And guess what? The pyramids in Bosnia, the tunnels in Bosnia, still heat Schumann resonance, 7.82. That's why a lot of theorists who come to our tunnels and the pyramids, they feel so good. It's saying that the pyramids are actually the guardians of the best frequencies for us. So they are the way out for the humanity. Mm, yeah, it's incredible. It really reveals how much we don't know about ourselves and about the, the planet on which we live. <laughs> well, uh, thanks so much for sharing all that with us. I hope I can get there one day to, to see yeah. it. And hopefully you'll keep us updated with all the progress that you're making there as well. Um, and I really hope that in the future this is going to, to come out and be accepted, you know, by the mainstream and, and realise what it's teaching us about our history and about science. So thanks again for your time. Thank you and you and everyone else is welcome.